Welcome to Hotspot with me, John Pennington in England, and joining us from Australia, Chetan Narula. Hello, Chetan. Hello, John. And uh, just uh, before we go on to talk about uh, the first test in Australia and India and the second test coming up in Brisbane, uh, just tell us briefly how Australia has been treating you so far. Well, like I said, off air to you, it's, um, it's a little different from England, which was my last uh, trip, obviously. Uh, uh, it's summer here, pleasantly, and uh, in summer in Australia, it doesn't rain a lot. There's a bright sunshine all through the day, and you don't have to wear jackets. You can roam around in t-shirts and shorts, um, which is actually summer, compared to what I did in England, where I had to wear like shoes and shorts and jeans and a couple of jackets on top, and you know, you throw in the mix. So that's so that's that's how Australia is treating me. Looking forward to. I haven't found the time yet to go to beaches. I just went to one beach in Adelaide, so um, hoping to find some more time. There's, there are no uh, particularly good beaches in Brisbane, I'm told. You have to go to Gold Coast, and so there's green grass on the pitch at the Gaba. So we are hoping. And it uh, looks like we might have lost Chetan there, as he was just describing the green grass of Gabba, where, of course, the second test gets underway. Well, in a few hours' time, depending on exactly when you, you might be watching this. So, uh, Chetan there, yeah, absolutely lovely weather, obviously, in Australia. It's about uh, five or six degrees over here in the UK, so Chetan wouldn't like it at all. Uh, I'm going to see if, uh, give him a couple of minutes, see if he can join, rejoin our hotspot. But uh, the plan is to have a look back at the Adelaide test. Uh, a wonderful game of cricket, wasn't it? Obviously, and a very emotional game in the wake of Philip Hughes' tragic death just a, a few weeks beforehand. Both teams went out to win the game. I thought that's what made it a really entertaining spectacle for me. Some outstanding individual performances. Chetan has just rejoined, so I'm just going to carry on my resume of the Adelaide Test and literally just throw it back to Chetan for him to, to give his view. And... Um, yeah, a, a really good, I thought, an advert for the game because both sides went out to try to win it. Wonderful central on the final day from Virat Kohli wasn't quite enough for India. Chetan, uh, just reflect if, if you can, uh, hopefully you won't drop out again, uh, on, that, on that Adelaide test for you. I thought it was a really, really good game. Absolutely. It couldn't, it, you could define it as one of the best test matches ever. You had um, everything in a, you, know, you have in a test match. You had runs, you had the wickets, you had pace, you had spin. You had pace bowlers beaten up, uh, um, Perun Aaron, for example. You had a uh, couple of bouncers uh, which hit the batsman. Uh, you also had concern for the batsman. You also had a bit of interaction between the two sides. Um, the empires had to step in. And then, obviously, the most important thing, you had an intense run chase on day five, and we had a result. Um, I mean, like I said, it could be one of the best test matches ever. Uh, from an Australian point of view, yes, it was important for them to get on onto the onto the field, start playing cricket. Um, but it's a sad tragedy what happened with Phil Hughes, but it was time that they moved on. And I thought cricket helped them a lot. I think um, the first couple of days it was all about emotions and tributes, and obviously that that was important. That needed to be done so that you know uh, the players vented their emotions on the field, doing you know what they know best. Um, but I think, you know, when, when, when the two sides clashed, and when I say clashed, um, I mean the interactions between the players or the altercation between the players when the umpires had to step in, I think that was the point when normalcy returned to, to Australian cricket, uh, you know, because uh, this is what Australian cricket is all about. You play hard, aggressive cricket. You do not back down. When you hit the batsman with a bouncer, you do not go. All of them don't go and, you know, ask how you are and, um, the crowd is not doing ooh and ah and you know hush. That was a very very uh, important moment, obviously, because uh, um, you know everybody was emotional at that time. It was important to get that first bouncer, first hit to the batsman out of the way. So, like I said, when the players, David Warner, Varun Aaron, Virat Kohli, Roy. Oh It uh, looks as if uh, we do have some issues with uh, Chetan's line out there in uh, in Adelaide. It, it, perhaps it's too hot. Oh, no, he's back. Sorry. <laughs> Chetan, you were just sort of... Uh, no, he's gone again. That's unfortunate. He's right. He's just about finished rack wrapping up Adelaide. And one point I'd like to make, I think he's absolutely spot on uh, with everything he, he says very eloquently there about uh, how Australia 
in a way, was able to use that test to move on in, in, in a sense from, from, the, from the tragedy surrounding Phil Hughes's passing. Was the, I really was really, really impressed with the attitude of Virat Kohli, both during the game and then both after the game as well, when he was, he was asked about, well, you know, why didn't you go for the draw? And he sort of said, well, if we'd gone for the draw, we might have lost by 150 runs. And he continued to back his players, Rohit Sharma, Riddhiman Sahib, continued to, and himself for that matter, to go out there, continue to play shots and try and chase down 364, which has seldom been achieved, certainly in test match cricket. And that was a really refreshing attitude to come and say, no, we were always going to try and win that game because we felt that was our best chance of getting anything out of it. He, of course, uh, I'm going to ask Chetan about this if and when he comes back, we'll sort of drop back into the normal ranks of, uh, well, he won't be captain for Brisbane if, as anticipated, MS Dhoni comes back into this team. And again, his attitude is, well, I don't need a, a C next to my name to, if it, to, to perform the way I do and behave the way I do. And again, a cracking attitude from him. Uh, while we wait for Chetan to come back then, Australia have made three changes. They will play Sean Marsh, Josh Hazelwood's going to come in to make his test debut and Mitchell Stark's going to play as well in Brisbane. I haven't got the full team lineup in front of me. I apologise for that. So uh, and, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, Chetan will come back. Otherwise, we'll have to wrap this one on its head reasonably swiftly. But uh, we'll wait and see because uh, India, obviously, Dhoni will come back in. You would think Sahar will drop out. He's, he's a better batsman, I think, than he showed in Adelaide. But uh, Dhoni back in, Sahar out. Any other changes possibly for him? It would be interesting to see what to, what viewpoint Shetton would be able to give us on that because he's obviously around the team. He's at the press conference, at the net, so you can see who's bowling, who's batting, etc. and get a better feel for things than I can from all the way over here. But uh, not looking very promising. Shetton doesn't appear to be either not able to get back back with us or, or struggling with something else, which is a, a great shame because I was uh, thoroughly enjoying uh, catching up with him and it looks as if Chetan has just rejoined us. Obviously, we're having a few network issues, so I think we'll sort of try and wrap it up to be uh, around about now. But Chetan, t to finish, really, I want you to basically throw us a prediction for the Brisbane test and maybe just look ahead. I've talked briefly about the changes Australia have made in your absence and uh, maybe think about what changes India may or may not make. Can you hear me, John? Yeah, I can hear you, Chet, and I've, uh, just uh, give us your, your look ahead, really, to Brisbane and, and maybe a bit of a preview for us to finish. Yeah, apologies for uh, for the network connection here. Like um, we were discussing um, previous test, the perfect test here. Moving on, uh, like you said, um, to the second test match. It's a greenish uh, greenish pitch on first view. Where we've seen quite a bit of, uh, uh, qu quite a bit of uh, rolling on the pitch uh, one day before the test match, so you can expect it's a... Uh, it's going to be a hard bouncy wicket. Uh, Josh Hazelwood and uh, Mitchell Stark have been included in, in, in this uh, lineup for Australia. Uh, Ara Shrin was looking busy in his practice session, so uh, it, it's expected that he will be back in uh, in the playing 11. Uh, MS Dhoni is back for India. He'll be the, he'll be the captain for India in this particular Test match. However, uh, he did not uh, stress whether India will go in with five bowlers or four bowlers. It's expected at the moment that because it's a greenish pitch. With um, you know a little bit more bounce and everything, so maybe Smith, who is uh, coming in as the 45th Test captain for Australia, he is he's he's quite young at 25. You know, does uh, doesn't have too much international. Um, leading experience. Obviously, he's led for Sydney Sixers and New South Wales, but on the international level, it's a bit different, you know, because everybody's watching and everything. You know, um, when he's led for New South Wales and Sydney Sixers, not everybody is plugged in, not everybody is glued in, everybody's going to watch when he's leading Australia. So that's that's a bit of a, a bit of a difference for him. For India, it'll be a change that uh, um, you have uh, Virat Kohli, who in one Test match showed a completely an aggressive side to the coin, showed how things could become better. And everybody jumped on, oh, Virat Kohli, Virat Kohli. Um, just five days of cricket, it's very harsh uh, on MS Dhoni to say, yeah, he's very defensive, let's replace him immediately, let's have Virat Kohli lead for the rest of the series as well. You know, uh, it, It's just been five days of cricket that Virat Kohli's led. India lost that match, 
to, to be very honest. India did not win that match despite his heroics with a bat or whatever. They did not win the match. If he continues like this and for the next five or six test matches and India loses all of them, then what? Then will everybody say, oh, let's bring let's bring MS Dhoni back? No. It's just been five days of cricket. It was good. You, you move on from that. Now the fact, fact is that MS Dhoni is here for the next three test matches. And uh, yeah, so basically in going into this third, third test match, you have changes in captaincy that's going to really govern how both teams play. You have Steve Smith who has to fall back on what Michael Clark used to do with the same ideology, with the same coach, same set of players. Similarly, Dhoni returns back, uh, returns, comes back to, to, to an environment he really feels comfortable with the same set of players, same coaching environment. But these are two different factors and for both these sides going into the third test match, these are, uh, for Australia it's an unknown factor, for India it's a known factor, but having seen how Virat Kohli operates, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's about uh, feeling comfortable again. Uh, will they feel comfortable again with how Dhoni operates? Will Dhoni, uh, you know, bring about a new side? You know, because he's been a bit on the back foot, been a bit defensive in overseas test, tests um, uh, over the past few years. Having seen what his side is capable of, will that bring out a new side to him in these remaining three test matches? Especially because Australia are being led by a raw captain. So it's an interesting mix. I think this is the uh, this is the background or this is the context of this particular test match at least going forward over the next five days. And uh, are, you, are you going to make a prediction for us? Um, green wicket, I think, uh, uh, mm, let's say Australia to win in five days. Got it, got it out of you in the end. Chet, and thank you very much for your time this morning and thank you for your patience. This is a rejoin you're obviously having a few a few network issues out there in Australia, but thank you once again for your time today. Always a pleasure. And, uh, thank you very much for watching us here on Cricket World TV, and I do hope you'll be able to join us again here soon. Thank you.